couple of years, Jamaica has lost a number of our greatest musical heroes in quick succession. Just two months ago, King Jami had a close call with the deadliest affliction that took out so many. Still recovering tonight, the legendary producer is on our stage to not only share his dreadful experience, but also propose healthcare solutions to help save fellow industrial players. King Jami, the legend. What can you tell us about the, the experience itself? I went to HIC at Institute of the Caribbean, you know, as I usually do to check up. And I found out that I have blockage yes. that couldn't be, you know, stent. Mm -hmm. So because I had stent in me already, they recommended that I did a triple bypass surgery because three valves are blocked. So wow. the doctors say I could be walking down the street and just drop down and die. Mm -hmm. So I had to take the decision, you know, to do the, the surgery. Wow. So on the 5th of September, I was admitted and they did the surgery. Mm -hmm. When they did the surgery, I had complications because I was bleeding very bad. And the, you know, the, when, when they checked the blood bank, they didn't have any blood in stock. So, you know, um, my family, John, John and the rest, I have to go around and get people to donate blood for me. And then on top of those that did before, you know, I have to get additional people because mm -hmm. I need additional blood. So they got the people and the blood bank, you know, um, you know, sent the blood up to HIC and that saved my life because I was running out of blood, really. Oh. The doctors almost gave up on me, you know, but God was at work. And this was done here in Jamaica, all of this. Yeah. Jamaica. Art Institute of the Caribbean, yes. Balmoral Avenue. Right. What did you do wrong, if anything? Well, in my early days, Winnie, my eating habits wasn't good, you know? And that's what contributed towards this that I had to do. Because um, the blockage, mm -hmm. I had, I'm a diabetic person and hypertension person. So... The whole combination, not eating properly, you know, no. triggered it. You want to help to prevent others from getting to where you got, right. your experience. Right, because, Winnie, most of our artists and musicians are dying from cardiovascular problems. What Dr. Dr. Madhu mm -hmm. and Gary mm -hmm. and myself... At the Caribbean we, at Art the, Institute. At the Art Institute of the Caribbean. Yes. We had a meeting with Evan Mullins from Jams, you know, because we want to involve the music industry first. Yes. So we had a meeting and everything went well. Jams is on board with it because they say it will help. Yes. And then after that, now we go private. They go private. Dr. Madhu and the staff there and they, they came up with a, you know, a health care that is affordable. Okay for our musicians and artists. Right across, the, into, right across the industry. Right across the industry. Oh, wow. All right, let us pause right here and okay. bring in Gary yes. to explain this plan for yes. us. We're joined now by Gary Lamb, and he is Chief Operating Officer at the Art Institute of the Caribbean. Correct, sir? That is correct. Okay, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much for coming for, yes, and, and willing to share with us it's my pleasure. this developing plan. Well, we're so grateful for his uh, recovery, first of all, and for his support of trying to bring affordable and quality health care, certainly to those folks here in Jamaica that are involved in the music industry mm -hmm. yes. and beyond, for that matter. So as he mentioned, we had a meeting with the uh, leadership of JAMS, and we presented a concept that we've been working on for some time now at HIC. Essentially, uh, it is a digital healthcare platform uh, that allows an individual to access primary care physicians uh, via their smartphone. Oh. So it is essentially uh, by joining the program you are able to uh, 
start a process of having symptoms and saying, I have, uh, I have some chest pain or I have a headache. And it's very uh, time consuming and very costly to get in a car and go visit a primary care physician. Now you can do it uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge, huge improvement in the access to primary care physicians. So these physicians will be based across the Caribbean, I suspect? No, or actually they will be at HIC. We HRC, will, they will be physically here. They are physically here. I want to point out that this is a very, very different model from some of the other telehealth programs that you may be familiar with. They're essentially extensions of existing practices where you still have to, you, you, may, you may use uh, text or video, but you have to make an appointment and the physicians have to make themselves then available to meet you at that particular time. That's not as convenient as certainly what we're proposing where literally it's accessible. Uh, the, the term is synchronous, that it's real time uh, that you can access a physician. How do they subscribe to the program? So we're working with JAMS right now. Uh, we've, we are going to work through what is the best way for their membership to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, we have some very specific ideas that we've proposed to them, and we will be proposing that, as I mentioned, to other associations and employers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is uh, still in final stages of development. I a ballpark in terms of cost, anything like that you can give out right now? Um, it will be very, very affordable. I mean, I, I really hesitate to give a number because I think that's part of what we're negotiating yeah. right now. Uh, but it, I, I mean, it, it will be uh, so, it, it will be ridiculously affordable. It would be a tenth of what you would pay to go see a physician in his or her office. Do they have to be a part of any organized body in the music industry? Well, um, no. But we're starting with the organized bodies because they're organized. Mm -hmm. So we can get those first. But any musician who are not, you know, member of any organization can join in. Yes. I've seen a lot of my, you know, friends and musicians go through all of these things and some of them not here today. So I decided to just join with HIC and make it happen. You wake up one morning, you have a really bad headache. Mm -hmm. It covers all kinds of what we would call primary care uh, sorts of symptoms. Again, uh, this has two real objectives. We want to identify any more serious problems early on in that uh, symptomology yeah, before, uh, before it gets to those very serious yes. kinds of things. But secondly, then, be able to uh, provide care if it's not that serious. So we will be engaging pharmacies, laboratories, uh, imaging centers, so that if there is a need for more diagnostic services, it will be automatically connected uh, through our system with them. They'll get a referral, they go and they have those tests done. That's all, there will be a medical record, if you will, within the platform. No matter how many times you come visit, no matter which doctor you see, it will be all centralized and we'll have a complete chronology mm -hmm. of the care and the services that were provided. I can access. Access care. the information. Yeah. Yep. So but that's a, about where it stops. It doesn't cover then um, admission, hospitalization. There will be a second and a third phase where we will be Medication able, and nor medication. It does not cover the pharmaceutical uh, cost at this point, but yes. it will cover the processing of that and getting the prescription to the pharmacy. I've spoken to a lot of my colleagues and they're done with it, you know what I mean? Oh, great. Well, it's about time. Even Bounty Killer, you know, I'm like Bounty Killer, you know? Yes. I've spoken to him and he said, why King? That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So he's spreading the word to, you know, the rest of the people. And oh, nice. We have to really thank you know, Dr. Madu and his staff, you know, at HIC for coming in such a dream, you know, because I was on my sick bed when he came to me with that, you know. Yes. Since I got better, we had a meeting and everything was okay. We, you know, it's just superb, you know. You are <laughs> a true legend. Well, I'm a, uh, the doctor said I'm a real but, fighter. But look at you, <laughs> you're fighting for others, even <laughs> as you recover. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. I have to do that, Winnie. 
have to do it. All my life I've been fighting to bust artists. Oh, so yeah. why can't fight them to make them live? A little longer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a public person, you know? I'm, I'm here to do my work. So that's a part of my job right now because I had that experience. So it triggered me to do this, what I'm talking about now. I'll peace earlier. I want to thank all of who donated blood for me. Yes. The blood bank, big up in the blood bank because it really saved my life, you know. Those of who prayed for me, the doctors and the staff at HIC, mm -hmm. Basil, you did a great job, you know. Everyone who, my wife who went through this, my sons, mm -hmm. my family, who went through this ordeal, boy, they worry with Winnie. I tell them, fret and worry. I want to thank everybody. You know what I mean?